Good morning. It's um, 15th of June, um, 2020, and um, Monday morning. <laughs> Happy Monday. Um, so, what are we looking at here? We've got a game here. D-Day, Sword Beach, on to Con. This is uh, from Decision Games. Um, the reason I picked this up was um, I saw Ricardo Massini. <clears throat> Ricardo Massini, who said that um, these were good games. Um, there are four of them on D-Day games. And um, I bought one. Low price, $22, something like that. The low price. Um, it, it, the quad format, you can buy them in the cold, the old... Um, you know, remember the old SBI quad format? You can kind of buy them in that format for $54. That's probably what I should have done. But uh, I wanted to try it and see what it was about, what it was like. Um, but Ricardo Massini said it was good. And Italians are usually pretty right about stuff of World War II because, um, you know, there's a almost a... Um, that, that war affected... Italians in, in, in a very fundamental way um, that I've not seen it anywhere else and I've been all over the place but the Italians for whatever reason you know whether it be Hershey bars or whatever that that, that war you know that war affected them and um, so when it comes to World War II you know I trust their judgment um, it seems like a weird thing to say but it's true let's let's read it let's see what we got here so um, it says, the D-Day Folio series consists of four separate games, each portraying a portion of the Normandy campaign area. Turns represent two to three days each. The games, wow, two to three days each. The games cover the campaign from the initial landing to the to the breakout. Yeah, uh, each game comes with one map covering. A portion of the battlefield, two point two and a half miles per hex. <clears throat> the playing pieces represent the regiments and special battalions taking part, plus the multitude of fire support available from them. The series uses the fire movement system rules with exclusive rules for each folio. I don't know if I played the fire movement system before. Uh, I kind of want to say that I have, but I'm not sure. What else it in there? Um, I play a, quite a few decisions games. I just m miss these. I miss these um, certainly, and I'm not sure why. I get their catalog, and I guess I just overlooked it. When I seen D Day, Utah, or D Day Omaha Beach. I thought it was the um, John Butterfield uh, Solitaire games, which are which are really good games. You know, D Day at Omaha Beach, D Day at. Uh, Petaloo, uh, those are really good games. But let's let's look and see what you get. I like the decision games when they say they they have one small step. Both of them, like nice bag, oversized bag. You can get the stuff out easy, very well. Um, one small small step and decision games. They give you true folios. Look at that. It's a true folio. It's a true folder. All right. So that's what it looks like when you open it up. Let's whoa. A baggie for your counters after they're punched. That's cool. Here's your counters. Okay. 2019 decision games. Fires. Okay, what do we got here? Alright, that's the counters. Hmm. You know, I don't really mind these counters, the looks of them at least. I mean, they go with a lot of the NATO symbols, I guess, but uh, I don't mind the looks of those counters. Um, I'll have, We'll have to see when they punch out. Uh, sometimes they don't punch well. Uh, Decision Games is one of those companies that they look, they, you know, they're, they're, they're way better when you, if you clip them. I'm not a counter clipper, but um, I'll have to admit, I kind of want to every time I have these. Look, let's look at the map. Let's check out the map here. Nice feel on the map. I like the feel. 
for a paper map, it feels really, really, really good. I, li I like that. I like that view. Oh yeah, it's a good map. Good material. It's um. It's it feels better than the material that comes with the, you know the the cheap uh, mini games. Uh, feels better made, much better made actually. Uh, I don't know if that's just my mind or what, but map. So I always want to look at it like this. But the reason I got Sword Beach, I, I like to see how people handle different things on Sword Beach, and I think that uh, it's probably my. I know it's I know it's a British. No, it's a British and Canadian, but I think um, British mostly. No, yeah, but I think that uh, I like I like it better. Uh, I just find it m more interesting of of the uh, the beach beach landings and the in the fight fighting. All right, so this is right side up, but I always you know if I'm playing, say I always like looking at it like this. This is for whatever reason. For me, that's that's how it should be looked at, even though it's this, you know, this is this north is here, but um, still, you no, know, it's it's, it's a decent looking map. Hexes are okay, it's a decent looking map. Turn track, I'm kind of sparse. Uh, fire support, German fire support, um, kind of sparse, but. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. I'm, I'm okay with it, though. I'm okay with it being sparse. I just uh, it, they all they look very clean when they're when they're when they're like that. But I always, you know, I always like tables there. But there might not be many tables with many tables to this. So let's see. Uh, on the con, this is exclusive to scenario rules. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the the system rules and the scenario rules. Um, you know, sometimes I think. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. They do that a lot in decision games. Um, I would almost prefer redundancy of everything in, in going over instead of having system, you know. But but I guess they're that's that's one of the ways they do it. You know, it does remind you some of that does really remind you of the old SPI. Of course, you know, in a lot of ways they they are the inheritors of SPI, um, spiritual inheritors, if nothing else. Um, and fundamentally, strategy and tactics, and things like that. Um, but the rule that's going to be the specific rules. So we got airborne landings. Okay. German flag. Okay. All right. The system rules. See if I can find a movement sequence of play. Let's see. What's this say here? The game is played in successive game terms. Um, with each turn composed of alternate player turns. During the game turn the play during the game turn, the players maneuver their units and resolve combat according to the sequence outline and within the limitations provided by the rules. Okay. I got sequence outline. What do we got here? We got support, fire marker phase, movement phase, bombardment phase. Okay. Combat phase, mobile movement phase, mobile combat phase, when second player turn in and go to game turn in phase. Okay. All right. Seems pretty straightforward. The system rules is see, so I have a table. That's why I like them being on the map. Oh, it's terrain keys. Okay. It's a terrain key and a. Uh, you know, who designed this? I forgot. It wasn't Joe Miranda. It was someone else. But so it's an eight-page rule book for the system rules and a four-page rule book for the specific scenario rules. I'm assuming you learn one, you pretty much play them all. Um, who are the play testers here? Is anybody we know? David D, Joe Hardy, Terry May. Okay. 
I like how they put play testers in there. That, that the, let me tell you, play testers are the uh, unheralded heroes of, of war gaming. Uh, this they just, um, you know, it's too much like work for me. But play testers, God bless them, God love them. There you go. There it is. D-Day, Sword Beach, on to Con by Decision Games. Cheap folio game. Um, good good priced folio game. Nothing seems really cheap here. Uh, nothing, nothing seems cheap, you know, bad at all. I'm going to try to get to play this and see what it's about. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll, I might I might solo it or I may play it with somebody. Uh, we'll see. I want to, I do want to get it to the table, though, because um, I want to see if I if it's worth buying the other ones. Um uh, you know, all right, y'all. Have a great day. Uh, be careful. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.